Hey everybody, sorry I'm a couple of minutes late. Uh, this is actually one of the first times I'm doing a, uh, a live uh, stream. So Mike Bonanno from World Arts. I actually have my son Michael Bonanno doing the back uh, backstage stuff here for me. And I really appreciate that. Um, hey look, it, all I've been getting over the last several months is uh, comments from people who I've been communicating with regarding knee surgery. Uh, as may you've seen on some of my Facebook posts or some other sources, I had my first knee replaced in January. Um, and it has been now, we're in June, second, second week in June or the first week in June. And it's been about five months. And then I'm going to tell you, knee surgery is no joke and there's a lot of pain involved. And I got to the point where, you know, this knee is really, really strong and I'm very thankful I did it. So, hey. If anybody's on the fence thinking, I don't know if I can do it, I'm scared, it's not worth it, because I did. I watched all the videos. I went on YouTube, and I suggest that you do the same thing, too. You know, watch people who talk about knee surgeries, the pros and the cons, and what you may gain and what you may lose. I, being in the martial arts for well over 40 years, lost quite a bit of my lower body strength and abilities with regard to my knees. I could never get into good stances for at least the last 10 to 12 years. I couldn't get into the, the proper uh, forms and I couldn't jump and push back and forth and do the change body that the Okinawan martial arts noted for. Well, that being said, I'm now in my 60s and I said it's time. Uh, I had my surgery done. I'm very thankful. Today's conversation is about the surgery I had for five days ago. Well, today is Sunday, so I had it done on Tuesday. So it's five days this knee was done. And again, from my first conversation, it's no joke. There's some serious pain. And most of the conversations that I've been getting, emails back and forth from friends, and let me say this is a two-way street. As soon as you post out the things that you want to take care of, like, hey, I'm getting knee surgery, you get information from people who've had it done, and then I got quite a bit of conversation and questions from the people who wanted to get it done and who were relying on me for information that at the time, six months ago, I did not have. But believe it or not, after the second knee surgery, I got a few pieces of the puzzle that I'd like to share with you. And again, that's why we're here. Mike Bonanno from World Arts, mainly focused on martial arts, but again, when you're having your knees done, you have to be able to adapt. So let's talk about the things, the questions that I've been getting. And I'm not sure my son Michael's on the uh, on the monitor now. This could be a live back and forth conversation, so I'm not sure how this works yet. You probably may watch the replay and that's fine. So I'll try to be succinct, but if you do have questions and you know how to ask them, he'll be able to find them and maybe he'll just shout it out for me so we can talk about it. But today, for the moment, I'm going to discuss the things that people have asked me. How do I get ready for knee replacement surgery? What things do I need? Well, I'll tell you, the things that you really need first of all, are to listen to your doctor. And something I heard from people before, everybody progresses, heals, and does rehab at different levels. I had a friend who after two weeks of, after the surgery, he was up driving and walking strongly. After my first knee surgery, I honestly still was on a cane after six to seven weeks. But after like 10, 12, 13 weeks, I, I sometimes forget I had knee surgery. So don't feel um, stressed out if you find that um, you're not feeling strong enough to handle the pain. You will. Okay, talking about this. The doctors will give you your prescriptions, the required prescriptions. It's okay, Lucy, you can yell at them if you don't have a dog barking outside, so again, doing things live things you're going to want to have around you. And again, I'm only going to talk generally about what I do and how I navigate the things that I've been given. But the doctors, your doctors, who you need to trust, and believe me, you will because they're fantastic, will give you the prescriptions and the medications that you need. Your job is to take those things and get them in an environment where you can survive and thrive and do your rehab and know that you can count on it. So, a little container that holds your meds all the varieties of meds. And I'm going to jump around quite a bit. So with regard to meds, I'll say this. 
you have a couple of meds in there, which I'm actually taking oxy and uh, morphine and some other medications that cause potential constipation. And the pain in this knee for the first few days of being home is sometimes kind of intense. If you do things right, and I'll explain how to do it right, you can minimize that. Ice is going to be your friend, elevation is going to be your friend, and rest is going to be your friend. But back to uh, constipation. Make sure you grab a couple of bottles of prune juice every morning when you get up. Have your family members and or yourself set it somewhere where you can drink a nice big eight ounce glass of prune juice in the morning and maybe four to six ounces at night. I was doing a smaller amount at night. And every morning I would have a small bowl of raisin bran. So with that being said, those things very important. And I have never once in both surgeries had to worry about that particular problem. And that is a challenge because when you're feeling the pain of this and you're trying to sit down and you know deal with that and have to deal with constipation, you don't want that. Trust me. Take my advice on this. Make sure you have prune juice, raisin bran. And the doctors are also going to give you um, stool softening medicines as well. But I did know that if I didn't take the prune juice and the raisin bran, it probably would have been worse. All right, that being said, I said I'm going to be bouncing around from topic to topic, and I told you that ice is going to be your friend. But let's go step one more step further and behind. Not only is ice going to be your friends, but your family is going to be your friends. I'm hoping that you have a, a support mechanism by which you can rely on. I have an awesome son who uh, took some time off of his busy life to stay home with me to take care of uh, the things that I need during the day. My wife, obviously sometimes she has to work, so having my son home and occasionally my daughter will be home to take care of that as well. So I have to say I had a really awesome support mechanism. And I've got a dog too who's barking outside and hopefully he'll stop barking in a minute, but who knows. Um, and again, having a dog, we can talk about that as well. I'm gonna just, hang on a second. Hey Lucy, yeah, call me. thank you. We're gonna probably interrupt because the dog likes to come in and out. So, um, with regard to having your family and friends there, important, very important, I'm very thankful for that. But now let's talk about your next best friend. Things that you're gonna want around you. A grabber, and again, Oh, he can bark if he wants. I'm, you will just have to deal with it. Sometimes doing these lives, it's just you're just dealing with everyday life. And, um, that's one of the things you're... Uh, I will digress off of this for a second to, to speak about my dog. Um, when you're at your preoperative uh, meeting to discuss the things around your house, they're going to tell you point blank, remove rugs. Any rugs, runners that could, you could potentially slip on. Uh, make sure that your dog is not going to trip over you or flip over you and having your family member speak. There's my doggy. Hi, Kermit. Why don't you go lay down, buddy? Okay. And you get your grabber, you can just push your dog away. No, no, I wouldn't do that. Well, lay down, sweetheart. Go ahead. Anyway, grabber. Got this off of Amazon. Uh, I will pop in the replay the links in the description if you're looking for one. Very important. Uh, if I want to grab, uh, like, one of my pillows that is over here and I can't quite reach, fantastic. Again, we'll talk about pillows in a few minutes. You're going to want to have a garbage can around you constantly because, you know, when your wife or son brings you an ice cream cone, you want to be able to throw the wrapper out. Um, the notepad for when and a piece of paper, pen, anything that you can keep underneath your meds with a list of the things that you want, the timings for your meds. Sometimes, you know, you have a phone. Sometimes that works. It's just nice to see it right here with you every day. And a pen. Water. Your doctors are going to tell you these things. I'm just going to say these things one-on-one -on -one right now because you and I are friends now. Just drink water. Tons of water. Keeps you flushed out. Keeps everything smooth. Got to have your remote. <laughs> There's a TV behind you, so uh, we'll get to that. Maybe we won't, but again, these are not necessarily need to be talked about, but you're going to want to you get home that first day and these things aren't set up for you, they're going to be on your mind. Obviously your phone and your phone charger. Make sure you have a, I have a battery uh, pack behind me and a, uh, an AC adapter so that I can plug various plugs in there 
and keep my phone charged at all times. Make sure you have your hand sanitizer right by you for various reasons. If you sneeze or whatever, you keep your hands clean. So when you gotta keep Kleenex, gotta have your Kleenex around you. And notice what everything is on. Tables, you gotta have your tables around so you can put stuff on. It's gonna be, this is gonna be kind of your life for at least a few days. I do have another table on this side where I keep my laptop. Uh, again, today is being Sunday, so I'll probably log on to my work computer on Monday, whereas that extra table for my laptop will be important. All right, well, let's talk about the chair. I know some people who could walk up the stairs that next day. I can't. I still am having you know, quite a bit of pain in my knee. It's swollen to the size of a bowling ball. And we'll get into how you can make sure that you can keep your knee um, smoothly gliding throughout the day where it doesn't stiffen up and the pain is less. But you're going to want to have some kind of a recliner with which even just reclining it out and straightening that knee kind of stings a little bit because this is where I basically sleep for at least the next couple of nights. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the, the details of this, but you saw a few minutes ago I, I had my pillows. Well, I want to always try to maintain, and this is really key those first few days, keeping your foot above your heart. Obviously, if it's above your heart, then you won't get, um, your blood won't settle in there, it'll flow away, and it won't be as swollen. Really, really important. Please don't discard that comment. Keeping your knee above your heart is going to be key. Well, what else do you do to keep the pain down? Okay. Again, I'm going to try to make this a short, maybe half an hour um, live, unless I get questions, and I'll be happy to answer them. But so I'm going to you blast. Got two comments beneath your question. Oh, okay, cool. Tell them I said hello. <laughs> My son Michael said I got a couple comments, but not questions yet. All right, I'm going to talk about what they give you at the hospital. Uh, the hospital is going to give you an ice pack, and in there is like a little empty envelope where you have the ice pack. They give you four of these things. Two for here and then two will be in your freezer. And then what you're going to do is you simply, and again I can tell you how to put them on but I don't think you need to see this. You just put them on, the doctors will show you. Keeping ice on your knee on a constant basis and keeping your knee above your heart will keep the swelling down which will keep the knee feeling good. Yes, it's important to do those things but so is movement. And we'll get into movement later, but there are there's a time for movement and there's a time for rest. And believe me when I tell you, you'll know those times. I'm going to set this aside because I was very fortunate to have a friend who showed me a device, and it's called uh, well this one here is called the Bragg um, Polar Ice Kodiak. What it is, and I don't know, is, can this be seen, Michael? Yeah. Okay. It's a. Uh, I told you what can be seen okay. before we start. Right inside of here is nothing more than ice and water. You fill it up to the top with ice and you put water and then you put the top back on, you plug it in, and this sucker gets very cold. And it's not like uh, 10, 20 minutes worth of cold. This could last up to eight hours. Now, uh, I'm just going to say this as like a sort of a disclaimer. This particular unit and it says it on the box, you don't want to put this plastic piece right on your skin. So I have like some kind of a towel that I put on there, or the first knee surgery was done in the winter, and in the winter time, I was able to, you know, have my sweatpants on, but during the summer, things are a little warmer, I don't want to wear my sweatpants. Okay, nothing more, again, than Velcro, flipping around, kind of wraps around both, both sides. Uh, if this goes on quick, I'll do it, if it doesn't, I won't, but, uh, for all intents and purposes, you're going to get the picture. It just simply straps on. And again, because I have that uh, towel down there, it's not touching directly on my skin. It really obviously does look nicer when you take the time to do it right. But this thing's last 8 to 12 hours. So when you're going to bed, it's got a really awesome, nice, long, stretchy, flexible cord that sits over the top. Excellent cold. Way colder than the ice packs. And you have to change those all the time. And one of the things is the reason that I enjoy this is sometimes you're sleeping downstairs while the rest of your family is upstairs or in another room and you do want to change your ice pack, you have to wake them up or you have to 
you know, trudge to the kitchen the first couple of days, it's kind of hard. Get to the freezer, load it up, get back here, especially in the middle of the night. I highly recommend you getting one of these. And I had a really good friend who um, Facebooked me today. I'm going to turn this off right now. That's uh, because I told her on a Facebook post that I got this, and I took a picture of it, and I texted it to her. And she said she went onto the Facebook marketplace and picked one of these up for $10. Brand new, she said. It was only used for knee surgery. Frankly, I, I got this for free because it was a friend, but he told me he paid 140 150 bucks for this thing. So don't discard the uh, Facebook marketplace or some other, other options, but try to get one of these units. Fantastic. Um, the other things I want to talk about are, well, okay. Again, I'm, uh, being a man, I have a different scenario than a woman would. And believe it or not, um, when you have your surgery, when you first go in for surgery, they give you a nerve block. And that thing blocks your quads, your glutes, and all of your knee muscles up here. So it's like right now, after five days, I can't. Like, see how I can lift this? Those muscles are engaged. These muscles aren't engaged. I can almost get this off the ground. I have to let my brain and my muscles communicate together. And we'll talk about that when we talk about doing quad sets and your physical therapy. Yes, I can talk to you all about physical therapy, but here's the disclaimer. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a physical therapist, but I do have experience with them. I've been doing physical therapy on this leg for five full months. At the first level was just a very basic walking, holding on to the counter so you don't fall, trying to get off of the walker, trying to get on the cane, exercises you do get from the cane to just regular, how to get up and down the stairs. Your physical therapist will go through all that with you. Going to YouTube, it's going to be very helpful. Some of those things are fantastic. Um, however, I'm just giving you a rough overview, so how can you just be prepared for the things and be, to be expected? But my conversation was that since this is blocked, it also blocks your bladder. And it's very difficult to, you know, urinate uh, during the time that you have the surgery, and they don't let you out until you've done it anyway. But somehow, some way, uh, for the next couple of days, you're going to be going more frequently than you normally do. Being a man, we have our, you know, our little urinal buckets that we keep with us here, and I keep them down to the side. I don't want them to be seen. And I cover them, and you know, I try to wash them out every single day. But you know, in the middle of the night. If you have to go, you use it. That's why some of the Kleenex is here to kind of put it around your area so it doesn't spill or leak or whatever. But, you know, make sure you keep that in the back of your mind. How will you do that? Things that, you know, people don't really talk about. They try to make you figure out on your own. All right. Back to um, your knee position. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about some physical therapy on the first few days. Then if there's no questions, I'd probably just say, very cool, and then we'll prepare for the next phase, but um, I have two pillows that I use, and even right now, I've been moving my leg quite regularly today, so it's not a big problem, but you know, I have to like physically lift it up. But you here again, my knee is above my heart. Actually, sometimes I use a second pillow. But you have to remember, you don't want to stay in the same position all night long, because your knee it's not going to freeze up and your cartilage is not going to form within two, three, four, five days. It'll take weeks for that to happen. So that's where your physical therapist comes in. But hey, the more you can take care of right now while your um, first few days before the physical therapy starts getting a little more intense, it's important to do. One of the things that I, I suggest you do, and I'm not sure, you're not going to be able to see it, but I'll take one pillow down and set it over there. And now it's a little more level, and sometimes I won't. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to literally raise this foot and squeeze my quad. And I want to put my hand right on my quad so it, it acts sort of like a biofeedback. I mean, nothing's really moving. I'm trying to flex it, and it's not really moving. Unlike, you know, if I do that, I mean, I can feel my quad actually engaging. But I only can feel a very small amount of movement but what it's doing is it's communicating, the muscle's communicating with your brain. And if you can just keep doing this 10, 20 times every couple of hours, you will move yourself and advance yourself in physical therapy far beyond what you thought 
could happen. Very important to do the quad sets. Uh, very important to talk to your physical therapist. Hopefully, they usually get out here within two days. Mine came at the third, uh, second day. Talked to me about a few things. Um, that's going to be key. The quad sets, pushing downwards, squeezing the quad, and trying to, you know, basically push your knee down. And you'll see they probably provided you with um, papers to show you how to do it. Now I can't push down on this to pull that down. It's, my leg's too sore, so I push down with this leg, the good one, and I use the handle. And now as this is coming down, it kind of stings. So what we've gone through is we've talked about the ice, important. Elevation, important. The tools you're going to need around you, important. The prune juice and the raisin bran, super important. Having your notepad, your meds in some kind of an organized container and counter space where you can have it. Making sure that there's people around you. Making sure that you remove all of the uh, floor mats around the house. In the winter time, it was way more difficult. You don't even want to go outside. So I'm going to talk briefly about your rehab for the first couple of days. Right about seven days, six, five to seven days, the physical therapist is going to come out and start really working with you. But what can you do in the interim, today, tomorrow? Those quadceps are important. And yes, they're going to try to tell you to do heel slides. Michael, can you see my feet be seen? No. Okay. Well, that's okay. Um, Would you like me to try to get them to be seen? Yeah, a little bit. Just move the camera down just ever so slightly. Thanks for being patient, everybody out there. We're, that's probably enough. Let's see what you got. A little, a little too much? Yeah. No, you can see your knee. Now. Okay. How about foot? Yeah, you can see. Okay. Well, you were always able to see your knee. Okay, great. So they're going to potentially tell you to do heel slides. There are devices you can purchase. I personally didn't purchase a device. I have a smooth piece of wood that I put down on the floor, and with these beautiful socks that they give you, there's some rubber on them. I take these off and I put my regular socks on. But for now, um, let's just pretend that I had a nice regular pair of black socks or white socks that are not rubberized. These rubberized ones you get from the hospital, they stop you from slipping in the hallways. You can just leave it down there for a minute if you like. And what you, they're gonna make you do is slide your heel back so that you can get uh, your contraction of your leg. And then they're gonna want you to push outward so that you can get an extension. And right now, on this knee, I have, I'm at zero, perfect extension on this knee, and I'm about 130 on the flex, which is about all you're going to want to do. I mean, I went through some fear, again, being in the martial arts, I really need my knees. And I have, and I will be showing you a series of rehab exercises to do, not only as a normal uh, knee replacement person, but one that actually needs their knees for for their, not only their job, but for, you know, well, martial arts in my case. But back to the knee thing. So if you don't have what it takes day one, the older patients tend to have a lot more pain. Um, then I'm going to talk about prehab, and then we're very close to being done here. Um, I'm literally just simply going to lift, lift my knee up and just let it kind of fall where it's going to fall. And it doesn't hurt here. Notice I got my hand kind of tucked in the cusp, what do you call it, right in the crease of my knee and just let it fall. And I'm going to set it down and I'm just going to sit there. I feel not stinging, but I can feel a pull, a light, it hurts so good stretch. You don't want to hurt, oh my God, stretch. No. Hurt so good stretch is what you're looking for. And let it sit there for about three minutes. So once you, you know, sit there for three minutes, and again, you got your remote, you got your TV, you got a clock, you can set your timers for anything you want. After three minutes, I currently, I'm using this step stool uh, because I haven't really, probably should have created a device for this, but <clears throat> then once you finish this, that's for the flexing of the knee. Now you want the extension. So I'm gonna lift my heel up on here and even like right there, I'm, I'm not straight by any length of the imagination, but I'm just gonna sit here for a minute. Yeah, does it sting a little bit? It does. But I'm not trying to cause myself great pain. I just want it to hurt so good. Um, if I have to 
you know, hold it up a little bit, I will. Use my strength and then just let it down for a minute and see how gravity takes it down. Eventually this is going to become more intense. That's why if you get this out of the way in the beginning, the more serious physical therapy that's coming becomes a little less painful. Let's hold that for one minute. Just the best you can. You know, bring it up. It's they're transitioning from bending to straightening that sort of hurts. But if you do this on a regular basis, I would suggest do three or four sets of those, and then rest. Take a walk. Oh, take a walk? Yes, take a walk, I said. They're going to request that you walk around every hour or so. And there's a way to do this in the very beginning. Once you get good and your physical therapist gets focused in on you, he'll hone in how you do it and where your strengths come. Really, right now, I'm talking about the first few days. Before I, before I do that, Michael, yeah, you can bring it back up. I really thank Michael, my son, for helping me out here. He's very awesome. Um, I can tell you, honestly, if you have not gotten your knee replaced yet, prehab is going to be your best friend. And I know you're going to say, what is prehab? I'll wait till Michael um, fixes the camera. Again, we're just, we're winging this today. I really appreciate your time out there, guys. And the, the reason I'm doing this is because, the, is the uh, handle not tight? It's okay. We're all family here now. We can, we can do whatever we want. I like it. I like it. It's starting to fall again. Yeah, the you thing. You gonna crank that? No, it's, it's not this. It's that. Yeah. All right. Well, you know what? We'll, we'll wing it. We'll do whatever we have to do. Oh, look at that. Uh, focusing. There we go. All right. Cool. So prehab. What is prehab? Well. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's rehab, but before you have surgery. Now, I thought prehab was different than what I intended to do. So before I had this right knee done, I had bone-on-bone -bone arthritis in both of my knees. So you know what? It's time to digress one more time. I'm going to talk about something else. I'm going to talk about prehabbing. Then we're going to take a couple of steps. And then we're going to go enjoy our Sunday. Before I had surgery, for about 10 years, I used a device called an off-loader brace. Um, it was my lateral um, cartilage on both knees that was mi missing. Basically, bone-on-bone -bone arthritis on the outsides of my knees, which forced my knees inward, so it bowed in. These devices, they're Breg. It's a Breg offloader brace. And it's the same company that does the, uh, the ice machine, too. And I'll have a link for these Breg offloader braces as well. Basically, I have the wrong one on me. But what this does is it straps on. And I'm not going to be able to do it on this knee because this is the affected knee and I can't find the other one. It literally straps on. There's a metal piece here. And then there's a dial. And this dial pushes the weight off the side with the bad cartilage and pushes it on the side with the good cartilage. And it got me through probably five or six good years before I had to have surgery because your insurance company is going to say, what have you done to really say that for sure you need surgery? Well, I did everything. I did cortisone shots. I did the Breg braces. And these are not cheap braces. So just let you know, these are amazing. Talk to your doctor about them if you have uh, the need to have only half the cartilage on, the, on, on your leg not being there, or your knee. Okay, so now prehab. Why was that conversation important? Well, because I, I thought by strengthening my quads and my hamstrings and my calves, I would go into this surgery with great strength, and I wouldn't have the, I would have the ability to recover quicker. So what I was doing was I was doing a lot of, I have a gym in the basement, a lot of leg extensions, and you've seen them at the gym where you load weight on it, and you're doing this, and it's pushing the weight, and your quads are really building up strong, and then you lay down on your stomach, and then you do hamstring curls, and it's building up the, the hamstrings back here, and then you have your, quad, your calf raises. I was doing a lot of those. 
But how do you do those if you've got bone on bone with arthritis in your knees? Hence the reason I brought up the Bragg braces. That's B-R-E-G, Bragg offloader brace. By wearing the brace, taking the weight off the side without the cartilage and putting it on the side with the cartilage, I was able to do these exercises. So I went into surgery in January and I will tell you right now, this was way more difficult pain-wise than this one has been. And I tried to do a correlation as to why I was kind of doing the same thing. Ha ha, but I wasn't doing the same thing. I was doing rehab on this knee, rehab, which did not require leg extensions or leg flexions or calf raises. It required the core muscle exercises. It required me to do heel slides and mini squats and sumo squats and um, stepping up on the steps, which really activated the glute muscles. And by doing one side, I was actually doing the other side. And I was really a little upset because I was not able to do the quad exercises that I was talking about on the machine. I was only able to do the physical therapy exercises that was given to me by my, by my physical therapist. Ah, I came out of this therapy um, and my quad muscles are actually, I can actually feel them today and it's only been five days. Here I couldn't feel them for weeks. I can feel that I, I have control over my glute muscles. So the prehab, doing it the right way, doing it with regard to as if you were rehabbing a 12-week leg will get you prepared for your next knee surgery. So that was all I wanted to mention about that. So here's what we've done. We've discussed all the things that you'll need. There are many other things to prepare for. These are the things that you'll go over with your doctor. Um, but I will say one more thing with regard to um, what you should be doing as you're walking around. Yeah, you can walk around incorrectly or you can walk around correctly for those first five or six days so that when it's time for rehab, you are prepared. So I'm going to get up and again, Mike, do I need to move this chair over? Do you think no. you can see? Okay. I told you what you can see. All right, very cool. So right now, Walker is my best friend. I, I can't go on a cane right now. And from sitting in a sitting position to going to a standing position, um, it's going to take a second as for my leg to feel comfortable straightening out. And I do use the word straightening out cautiously because there's no real straightening out. <laughs> it's just going to go as straight as it'll go right now. Um, and, you'll, and you can see, and again, can you see my leg right now, Michael? Yes. Yeah. You can see this is my done 12, 13, 14 weeks ago. I can pull that all the way back, and it's strong as an ox. I can, you know, I can load on that leg. No pain at all. It's the best thing I ever did. All right, I'm just going to simply um, show you how I suggest you walk. Give me a second as I move these pillows out of the way. Is the um, is this in the way, Michael? Nothing's in the way. Okay. I am. I mean, it might be in your way, but no, it's not. It's the not. Way. Now, when you do, I should I flip the light on in there? Is that right? You can see everything. Okay. Just to let you know. Your doctor, your physical therapist is going to tell you, when you're stepping up from a step, the good leg, good leg, up, have it. If you're stepping down, bad leg, down, the other place. So I'm going to show you how I would get up on this step. Um, so basically, I get as close as I can, put my walker up here, I'm going to use my arms for strength. I, I'm going up, so I want my good leg to come up, which means Weight is going to be on this leg that's kind of hurt. So weight on this, good leg up, and now I'm here. So how will you walk? I'm going to take a few steps this way, and then I'm going to come back this way. I'm going to come back and I'm going to say goodbye, and I'm hoping that everybody's going to have a good Sunday. You want to extend your leg. I mean, I'm just going to do it like this for a second. You want to push your walker out. All right, and then you're going to step with your, hang on, step with your right foot. Now notice your good foot. Step with my good foot. Notice that my back leg is bent. That's what you want. And then you want to bring it forward to a straightening position. And then do the same thing. Now I'll just kind of walk in a second. I'll go this way. So I'm going to take a step.
step with my right foot. I'm going to roll the walker. Notice as I take the step, this leg is bending. And then I want to push it forward. And I want to try to straighten it out there. Push the walker forward. Weight is now coming on my bag leg, but I'm using my walker as strength. Same thing. As I get far ahead, this leg starts bending. And you want to straighten it. You know, again, straighten it is uh, subjective at this point. I'm going to turn around right now. Now that may seem easy, but it isn't. I'm still dealing with you know quite a bit of pain, and I'm still taking my pain meds, and I'm hoping to you know move off them slowly over the next couple of days. So coming back at you. Now I know I told you you should be moving your runners, but the good part about this particular runner is that it's wide, it's narrower than the, the balls on the wheels on the walker. So again, I'll take that first step. As my back leg is now bent, I want to push it forward into a straighten. Now the weight's coming on that right foot. I'm activating with quads, but I'm still using the strength on the walker. Step forward. And even if you can only do one or two steps going one way and one or two steps going the other way, that's fantastic. So hey, how do you come down a stair? Well, when you're coming down, bad leg down. So here, weight on this, my bad leg coming down, and now I'm ready to rock and roll again. I hope these were many of the questions that I have been asked over the last, I would say, 15, 18 weeks. There's so many other cool things to talk about. Um, with regard to physical therapy, I'll be posting a bunch of other videos on my website. Again, it's um, World Arts is the name of my... Um oh, my dog. How cute. I think we have some... Well, you know what? Goodbye, everybody. Mike Bonanno from World Arts. Check the links. Check the description. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Are we on?